let's take a look at question three right so question three uh, in the diagram below a trolley of mass five kgs moves at four meters per second east across a friction a frictionless horizontal surface so we don't have any friction there a box of mass 1.5 kg is dropped onto the trolley then the trolley and the box continue to move in the same eastward direction take eastward direction as positive 3.1 i'm gonna let you state the law of conservation of linear momentum and then 3.2.1 we're supposed to calculate the velocity of the trolley box system after the box is dropped onto the trolley All right so usually in physics if 3.1 says state the law of conservation of linear momentum and 3.2 you're supposed to calculate something that's something which you're supposed to calculate you are most likely to use the law that you've stated so if we use the conservation of linear momentum here we're going to say that the momentum before is equals to well not the momentum but the sum of the momentum before is equals to sum of the momentum after right uh, after the brick is it a brick after the box has been dropped down with the trolley not a brick right so we have m1 v1 that is the momentum of the box m2 v2 that is the momentum of the trolley and then after the box falls onto the trolley right after it is dropped onto the trolley we have m1 plus m2 multiplied by vf because they now move as one unit so the box it is being uh, as it is being dropped uh, onto the trolley will have a mass of 1.5 but its velocity along the x-axis is zero right plus mass of the trolley which is five is velocity it says four meters per second to the east we're already told that we must take direction to the east as positive so this that is five multiplied by four okay after the collision we have 1.5 plus 5 multiplied by vf so obviously this will give us 20 and this is equal to 6.5 vf so vf is equal to 3.08 meters per second east so there we go 3.2.1 3.2.2 we want to calculate the change in momentum of the trolley so change in momentum m vf minus vi initially is oh well not initially because the mass is always conserved it's the same as the mass is 5 but the final velocity is 3.08 the final velocity is 3.08 and then what about the initial velocity it is 4 meters per second in the same direction so the change in momentum therefore is 4.62 kg meters per second do you see the difference when i'm talking about impulse i use newtons multiplied by seconds when i'm talking about change in momentum i use kg meters per second that's how we're supposed to be done right 3.3 state the condition for an elastic collision right we've already talked about that as we're answering the mcq for a collision to be elastic momentum needs to be conserved kinetic energy needs to be conserved and then 3.4 is saying that use a calculator here to show that the collision between the box and the trolley is elastic or inelastic so take a look at this we don't have to show that momentum is conserved anymore we actually don't have to do that why we were told in the question statement that uh, the trolley is moving on a frictionless horizontal surface right if it is moving on a frictionless horizontal surface the linear momentum is conserved that is why we use that theorem in 3.2.1 because how are we using that theorem if the linear momentum is not conserved right so already the linear momentum is conserved we just need to check the kinetic energy whether it is conserved or not right but we cannot start by saying ek before is equal to ek after 
The equation can also say show that x is close to 2 and then you start by saying x is close to 2, therefore blah 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 blah. Does it make any sense? So right, we need to calculate ek before separately, calculate ek after separately and see if they are close to each other. So let's do that. ek before, right? The sum. So we're going to have half mv squared for the box plus half mv squared for the trolley so for the box half m is 1.5 it's a v is zero along the x-axis and then half the mass is five for the trolley the velocity is four and we square that right so let me just put that in my calculator and see what i have this is 40 joules and now let's calculate ek after the collision right so after the collision they move as one unit right so we are going to have a half five plus 1.5 multiplied by 3.08 squared because after the collision they move as one unit so let me just calculate that and see what happens. I'm getting 30.83 joules. So clearly, EK before is not equal to EK after. So we can confidently say that the collision is inelastic. Right, let's move to the flowing quench. If you like this video, you will definitely love my course. Go ahead and click the link on my bio and you will land on this page. You will not only find the past exam questions, but introduction videos where I break down complex concepts into small pieces that are easy to digest. It is very important in grade 12 to stay ahead of your teacher and this is what this course is for. It's very easy to navigate through the course as videos are arranged into collections. You can clearly see that we have electrostatics, work energy and power, Doppler effect, so on and so on. Do you maybe need the help with study tips and creating your own timetable? We can talk about that inside the course and I can help you out. It doesn't even take a minute to join. Can't wait to hear from you.